Hello, welcome to Introduction to Ethics, Phil 1300, Oakland University, Fall 19. Uh, my name is Grant Yoakum. I will be your course instructor this semester. Um, if you're feeling fancy about it, it is doctor, but um, nonetheless, I've been teaching at Oakland University since winter 2005, which makes me uh, well, it's it, that's an embarrassing amount of time. So, um, it, yeah, so I've been at this quite some time. Uh, this is going to be a completely online course, so it's this way that I will talk sort of at you. Uh, we can correspond via email, there will be discussion forums, um, and a good deal of additional sort of multimedia um, sort of content for this course all of which will be posted to Moodle. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do is log into Moodle. And uh, I've posted the course syllabus, which um, I've got a hard copy of here because I'm old. Um, but uh, nonetheless, you've got access to infinite copies of that, provided you're willing to uh, feed your printer paper. Um, if my email address is up there, please email me at yokum at oakland.edu um, and uh, from your Oakland email address that ensures that I'm actually getting your emails because we've got a pretty good spam filter that like makes sure I'm not getting some external emails. Uh, and uh, yeah, that way we know we're corresponding. Plus, if I'm searching for emails, I find them that way. So it just keeps uh, bookkeeping nice and easy. Um, the purpose of this video today is to go over the, the course syllabus, give you an idea of what we're going to be engaging in this course over the next few months, uh, to introduce myself uh, and um, make sure we're more or less on the same page. So uh, that's what we will be doing uh, today. So, uh, there is a course syllabus, but I guess I should introduce myself first. Um, so, I'm Grant. Uh, I don't stand on a lot of ceremonies, so you can call me Grant. That's just fine. Um, I am Canadian. Uh, I am sitting in Canada right now um, from a rented office uh, because I have twin girls that make it difficult to get stuff done around the house. Um, like I say, I've, t I've been teaching for Oakland University a long time. I've also taught for U of M Dearborn, University of Detroit Mercy, University of Windsor, Brock University, um, the last two in Canada, Oakland Community College, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. So, um, that's, uh, so I've got a lot of teaching experience. Uh, I am doing office hours on campus by appointment only. Um, it's they're making it easy on me by teaching these online, they're having me teach these online classes. So um, it, it, I come into campus very infrequently, but of course you're my students, this is my job, and if you need to um, get in contact with me and only a face-to-face -face meeting will do, uh, well, I will come into campus, um, but my availability is only on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, this semester. Um, I'm also an academic writing advisor for the University of Windsor, so um, one that <laughs> gives me lots of additional skills to apply to this course. But um, in addition to that, that, that eats up my time on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So um, it, that is uh, my limited availability there. Uh, if you're looking for my office, uh, my name's on the door along with like five or six other people. Um, it's the Math and Sciences Center, uh, sixth floor room, 642, end of the hall on your right. So um, that's where to find me if you're finding me, if we've got an appointment. So um, the, the first thing, and it's right at the top of the syllabus here, uh, if you're having difficulty in this course, you contact me and I help you. That's the way this works. Um, I've been doing this a long time and, um, and I know this material can be foreign or difficult or what have you. If you're struggling in the course, struggling to understand the readings or something along those lines, get in touch with me and I um, will do my very best, my level best to help you. Right, and if I see effort from you, um, I'm very forthcoming uh, with regard to extensions, uh, additional help, um, that sort of thing. Um, 
How do you get in touch with me? Well, I've given you my email. Um, you can leave a uh, message with the, uh, the, the administrator in the Department of Philosophy. Um, and if you need an appointment, and I absolutely cannot make it in, we can schedule a Skype conversation as well. Um, I've done that for students uh, for many semesters now. I've been teaching online cl classes for about 10 years uh, now. Now, um, the course. Uh, this is an introduction to ethics, and by introduction to ethics we mean ethical theory. Right? So, um, uh, I'm going to talk about the course first. There will be a second video about the course policies, and a third video about the assignments. So, uh, the course. Um, the course catalog description reads, and I quote, major ethical analysis of right and wrong, good and evil, from the ancient Greeks to the present. Appeals to custom, theology, happiness, reason, human nature will be examined uh, as offered viable criteria for judgments on contemporary uh, issues of moral concern. Offered every semester, and I'm sure you know this part, satisfies the university gen ed uh, requirement in the Western civilization uh, knowledge exploration area. Right? Um, and uh, the important things um, from the course objectives um, to introduce uh, students uh, to the important historical texts and ethical theory. Right? So um, these are your textbooks. I know you're saying, oh God, oh God, why is there so much reading for this course? We're not getting all the way through any one of these books. They just, well, one, are fairly cheap books. So. Um, it, that's we got that going for us but two um, these are primary texts rather than for example uh, what you would get from a compendium they send me this junk uh, like this one here um, this is a doing ethics moral reasoning theory and contemporary issues um, what you get from a book like this one is an expensive textbook right <laughs> more expensive than what I do. And two, what you get from that is somebody's analysis of the primary texts. But I don't know about you, but um, if I want to know what Socrates or Aristotle or Kant and Mill have to say, I go to Socrates, or Aristotle, or Kant, or Mill, right? Straight from the, uh, like, it's, I'm not going to do a telephone game with the primary texts and get somebody's analysis of an analysis of the texts. So, um, students, text, 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 students, you've been introduced, but we'll, we'll get into uh, more about that. Uh, to show students how theories about ethics have developed over time. So, um, it, like I say, this course catalog description and the objectives, uh, this is the box this course has to fit in, right? So I take this seriously and I try to take each one of these off as I design this course. So, um, it, what that's telling me is it's got to be a historical introduction, right? Uh, the description already mentioned from the ancient Greeks to the present. Well, we're starting. Um, your first video material will be pre-Socratic philosophy. That's just fancy terminology for before so Socrates. We're starting with Socrates and we're going all the way up to post-World War II with uh, Jean Paul Sartre. Right. So that's a good chunk of the history of Western philosophy that we're sort of spot checking along the way. And we'll see how the moral ideas have developed across time. In addition to the Western civilization knowledge area, this course also includes cross-cutting uh, capacities um, of effective communication and critical thinking. And this is where they basically tell you that you've got to read, you've got to analyze, um, and you've got to write creatively and clearly about these ethical situations. And then finally, you've got to apply the theory to practice somehow. So what we're going to try and do is that throughout the course. Um, I'm going to be presenting you with these arguments. Right? from each of these theorists which um, present some sort of a basis to make a normative claim. A normative claim is an ought claim. You ought to do this, you ought not do that, right? It's also known as a prescriptive claim, right? which gets its name from uh, the, the notion of a prescription, like the doctor hands you a prescription and says, do this and you'll feel better, right? The doctor is saying, you should do this, right? Well, we do this with regard to 
moral questions all the time. And, uh, you know, as a free thinking individual in, free, in, as in a free nation, what you should do is say, on what basis can you claim that I should or should not do X, Y, or Z? Right? So we've got to look at these arguments and ultimately be persuaded by the reasons or not. Right? So um, I, I designed this course so that um, one, you have to write, two, you have to read, three, you've got to think critically and analyze. Right? So um, when we move on to assessments, I'll show you how um, we do this. Right? Um, so, uh, boo, 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 boo. Uh, there's some stuff about argumentation, we'll get into that. Um, and I've written a cute little course description which I'll leave to you. Now, um, the text for the course. I'm sure uh, you are freaking out about this. This is Plato's five dialogues. We're reading two of them, the Apology and the Credo. That's it. Right. So, um, it, 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 in a nutshell, Socrates' moral theory is contained in the Apology and the Credo. Um, the, the, the distinction between law and morality is sort of drawn. Um, so, uh, we'll take a good long look at that in the first couple of weeks of content for this course. Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. Um, this is a great book. Um, it's, it, well, it's, it, as the title suggests, it's ethical theory, right? Uh, but uh, why is it the Nicomachean Ethics? He named it after his son, Nicomachaeus, who was its editor. And um, it's also partially a child-rearing manual. Um, this might also be the first self-help book ever written in the West as well. In the West, that's an important distinction, right? Um, it, since this is a Western civilization course, and since the word Western is in, I've restricted myself to Western theory, right, um, with regard to this, but um, there's lots of interesting ethical theory that comes from Eastern philosophy as well, and the whole distinction sort of, anyhow. Um, so we're reading books one, two, and three of the ten that make up this, um, and uh, what you'll get from Aristotle is sort of a bootstraps method um, centered around uh, the, the, the notion of happiness, right? So happiness is the key here. Then um, we will move on to Kant's grounding to the metaphysic of morals. And do you see this hairline? It comes from, oh, what's this guy trying to say to me? That's largely Kant's fault, right? So um, brace yourself, this is rather difficult, but it's important moral theory. I cannot even imagine an intro to ethics course that doesn't engage with Kant and uh, his interlocutor, uh, the fancy way of saying a guy who has a conversation with John Stuart Mill, right? Uh, the key word for Kant is duty, right? And he's going to uh, try to <laughs> identify what he calls the supreme norm of morality. John Stuart Mill, in his utilitarianism and his On Liberty, yes, I made you buy two books, um, utilitarianism, that we'd have to read six chapters of this in order to uh, get what we would um, if we just read the first three and one of this, and what are these books, like five bucks or something like that, if you're, you can buy them for under a buck if you find them used on aid books or something along those lines. But nonetheless, um, utility is just what it sounds like. It's a means and calculation, right? That aims at producing the best outcome. It's cost-benefit analysis, how a guy by the name of Michael Sandel um, introduces it. But um, it's interesting and um, timely as well. Um, in fact, the distinction between Kant and Mill helps, to, um, helps us to understand uh, quite a lot of um, the basis for the concurrent sort of political divide in uh, sort of Western democracies today. And right? so um, hopefully this section um, involving Kant and Mill will be a very interesting section. Now, um, after we complete that, um, you see what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going ancient, modern, postmodern uh, with the distinctions 
uh, that we're drawing here um, because after uh, the moderns, we are going to turn to one of the fathers of postmodernity, uh, one Mr. Frederick Nietzsche. And I'm a little bit worried about what you may have heard on the street about this guy. Um, I hope to correct a lot of that as uh, we read through um, Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil, which um, is not an exercise in relativism or a claim like there are no moral standards, but rather um, a sustained critique on uh, the history of moral philosophy in an attempt to sort of reinvigorate um, our engagement with the world and our engagement with one another, right? Uh, overcoming prejudices and dogma, right? So uh, that's that's what Nietzsche, I, I partially wrote my dissertation on Frederick Nietzsche, so um, hopefully we can have some interesting uh, discussions of that. And then uh, we are going to conclude with one of the most, uh, I got some sticker on the cover there, uh, one Mr. Jean Paul Sartre. Now, this book is out of print, um, I should warn you, but I have a PDF copy that I'm going to share with you once we get to this section. Um, it's an interesting exercise in existentialism and opens up the door to a discussion that's nearly wholly lacking and the whole history of Western philosophy. The book is called Existentialism and Human Emotions. You might say, what do emotions have to do with anything? Well, think about yourself in a, more, a situation choosing morally, right? Maybe you just got into a car accident, or you're in the middle of a tough breakup with someone, or something along those lines, your heart is beating, you're angry, you're scared, you're sad, you're etc., etc., right? So by ignoring the emotional element of moral choice making, we're ignoring an entire dimension, right, of something that should be part of ethical theory. Right? So I like to conclude with Sartre, and um, we also have a, um, another theorist by the name of Amy Harvin, who, um, who does work um, at Oakland University on ethics and emotions. So um, if you take my course, this will perhaps prep you for the beginning of her more advanced course as well. And I'm not just, I'm, I'm teaching this because I think it's important to think about. Um, I'm not think, uh, teaching this to get you to take more philosophy courses, which you should, you should anyway. So um, those are the texts that we'll be engaging in the course. Uh, what we'll do next is go over um, course policies, right? Um, but you've already determined that this is going to be a writing intensive course. You're going to be writing into forums. Uh, you're going to have short writing assignments as well um, this semester centered around um, the six sections of this course uh, that uh, go along with the six theorists that I've just sort of quickly introduced you to. So um, I try to lay these courses out so that they are you know, very doable. If you do all the work, you should get a decent grade, um, that sort of thing. And um, so uh, what you're going to need for this course is um, some technology, a decent laptop with speakers, um, a decent word processing capacity, um, and, and an internet connection, right? So basically, um, access to Moodle, uh, the ability to view YouTube videos, and the ability to reliably submit electronic files through Moodle as well. So um, that is uh, what you're going to need. Um, I'm going to point this out at the end of each of these videos. Um, the fourth page of your syllabus, um, I've laid out a tentative schedule for the entire semester that highlights all of the important dates. All of the due dates are right there. I say right at the top of this page um, that you might print this page and keep it handy to stay on top of the course schedule. Right? This is where you should be when. Um, I've laid out the uh, material on Moodle to sort of sequentially um, show itself, reveal itself to you, um, giving you two weeks which, with each theorist, roughly, um, and um, the assignments are laid out in that way too. So um, again, if you do everything, you should do well in this course. 
And if you're working with me, I am more than happy to work with you. Um, so everything you need to know about what you need to do when is on the fourth page of the syllabus. Alrighty, um, next we will move to my least favorite um, policies.